Welcome back to the next video, everybody. Today, we're going to look at the crazy amount of math needed to learn for Mott's last theorem in detail yourself. Okay, so we're not going to look at all of literally every paper and every book you could ever possibly want to read to learn all of the details from the ground up of every possible theorem needed in the proof. But let's say this. There are three levels you might be able to understand for Mott's last theorem at. Very, a very high level approach where you don't know a lot of the details, but you know kind of the strategy of the proof. A very medium level approach where you know a lot of the details, but not all of them. And then very low level approach where you get down into the nitty gritty. You know a lot of the details of a lot of the theorems. You've looked into proofs of all the auxiliary and supplementing theorems. Maybe you don't know all the details there from first principles, but you know quite about, you know, just about as much as you could possibly want to know and you're satisfied. And then there's maybe like a level below these three, which is like, I know every single detail of every single proof of every single theorem. So we're not going to go there. I don't know if anybody actually knows all of that stuff in the world, but we're going to do a pretty good job here, a pretty comprehensive job. So let's get into it. At the undergraduate level, what do you need? I'm not going to write down things like, yeah, you need the calculus sequence. Yes, you need an introductory proofs course. Yes, you need a basic real analysis course. I'm not going to write that stuff down. Okay. If you don't have that stuff, go get those credentials. Linear algebra. You need a good, solid, well done introduction to linear algebra, which I find a lot of students don't have. Um, I like Strang's book, Introduction to Linear Algebra, and Lay's book, Linear Algebra and Its Applications. My course preps out of both of those books. They're both quite different. I would read both, do as many problems out of both as you can. You need a serious upper level undergraduate level linear algebra course as well. I like some combination of Axler's Linear Algebra Done Right and Hoffman and Kuhn's Linear Algebra. And then you can just kind of have Lang's linear algebra just hanging around as a supplemental reference if you need some, some more information. You need to also begin to learn at this stage about matrix groups in and of themselves. And I like Tapp's book, Matrix Groups for Undergraduates for that. This is in preparation for Lee theory and representation theory and Langland's program and stuff like that. Abstract algebra, the more algebra you know for Fermat's last theorem, the better. My course preps out of Galleon's contemporary abstract algebra and supplements with Dummett and Foote's abstract algebra. And then you're gonna to need to know your Galois theory down absolutely pat. And so Milne's Galois theory is the place to go for that, in my opinion, but I think Dummett and Foote also covers this. Garling's book covers this. There's a variety of places to learn Galois theory, but just make sure you learn it thoroughly and comprehensively. You're going to need to know the basics of representation theory of finite groups. I just like Dummett and Foote's chapters on that and abstract algebra. You're gonna to need to know point set topology quite well. I just think Munkers' topology, especially the first six or seven chapters is the place to be for that. Although there are a variety of other more modern kind of updated references that a lot of people like, I'm aware of that. You're gonna need a good complex variables course in preparation for complex analysis. Ash Novinger complex variables is the place to go for that. Although there again are a ton of other books. Number theory, you need to know a ton of elementary number theory. So. Honestly, the best book I know of is Niven Montgomery Zuckerberg, An Introduction to the Theory of Numbers. There are rumors that this book can turn you into a number theorist if you aren't one. And then also I like Ireland Rosen, A Classical Introduction to Modern Number Theory. Look, just like a serious course in number theory where you learn the prime number theorem, Dirichlet's theorem, um, primes in arithmetic regression, all the major theorems like that, that's what you want. You're also gonna to need to know a ton about p-adic numbers. And at the undergraduate level, I just like Gauvea's p-adic numbers and introduction. And I like you doing as many of the problems in there as you can. Differential geometry. Look, you don't really need differential geometry too much in and of itself. But if you try to learn algebraic geometry without learning the basics of, algebra, of differential geometry, rather, you're gonna have a hard time intuiting some of the concepts introduced in that course, because the algebra sort of hides a lot of the intuition. So this isn't strictly necessary, but I recommend some number of the following books in order. Two's an introduction to manifolds, two's connections, curvature, and characteristic classes, although you certainly don't need to read that entire book. And then Lee's introduction to smooth manifolds, which has some repetition with two, okay? So just get your basic differential geometry in order, like a serious one semester undergraduate course in differential geometry, well, taught, comprehensively taught, should do the trick. Okay, now algebraic geometry, you need to know a ton of algebraic geometry. At the undergraduate level, before you even start learning algebraic geometry, I recommend Hartshorn's projective geometry text, especially the first three chapters, just to get a feel for projective space. I like Reed's undergraduate algebraic geometry, Fulton's algebraic curves, and Harris's algebraic geometry, 
for a serious study of the subject in the classical setting. If you want a little bit more advanced text, Fulton Harris Principles of Algebraic Geometry is, is your go-to. And then if you want a little bit more of a computational approach to algebraic geometry, Cox, Little, and O'Shea's Ideals, Varieties, and Algorithms is your book. I haven't read all these myself. I will be prepping my upcoming course out of these three books, though, as well as a couple of other references. Um, you should probably start, even at the undergraduate level, exposing yourself to elliptic curves and modular forms. Silverman Tate's book, Rational Points on Elliptic Curves, is the book I prep my course out of. I also like Koblitz, An Introduction to Elliptic Curves and Modular Forms, which is a more advanced take, but it starts to show you the interplay between elliptic curves and modular forms. And while you're at it, you get a good chunk of the proof of the congruent number problem, which is a playlist on my channel that I've done already. I covered the congruent number problem in some detail. Okay, let's move to the graduate level. Linear algebra, you're gonna need an advanced course in linear algebra. I like Romans, advanced linear algebra and or Curtis's abstract linear algebra. You're also gonna to want to make sure that you get kind of a coordinate free approach to linear algebra. So Winitsky's linear algebra via exterior products would be a good place to go for that. You're just gonna to wanna to start getting used to like <clears throat> wedge products and symmetric powers and symmetric algebras and exterior algebras and things like that because they come up in algebraic geometry and you need to be aware of how to use them, okay? Abstract algebra. A Tia McDonald commutative algebra is sort of the place to start. That's a great course on commutative ring theory right there. Um, Eisenbud's commutative algebra with a view toward algebraic geometry is a great reference to have as well. I don't know that you need to read this entire book. It's quite difficult, but you need to have it by you and ready to use it as a supplement when you run into facts from commutative algebra in your algebraic geometry readings and courses that you don't know the proofs for and that you've never seen before. This book probably has you covered. Okay, uh, Lee theory, you're gonna wanna know some basic Lee theory, especially if you wanna get hardcore into the representation theory stuff and into Langland's program. So I like Hall, Lee groups, Lee algebras and representations, the first four chapters and Knapp's Lee groups beyond an introduction, chapters zero through five. Topology, you're gonna need to know your algebraic topology at various points, especially if you want to understand some of the intuition developed in algebraic geometry, like the Atal fundamental group, for example. So I like Hatcher's algebraic topology for that. Complex analysis, of course, you're going to need to know complex analysis to study modular forms. So Alpher's complex analysis is the place to go for that. Now, again, you need to know a ton of number theory for Fermat's last theorem. It's a very algebraic number theory driven proof. So I like the following books, and you should probably just read all of these. I have not quite read all of them myself, but I'm getting there. A great start is Ash, A Course in Algebraic Number Theory. I like Sayers, A Course in Arithmetic, especially the first four chapters. I like Neukirch, Algebraic Number Theory, the first three chapters. I like Castles Froelich, Algebraic Number Theory, the entire book, but at this stage, just as much of it as you can understand is fine. Ramakrishnan, Fourier analysis on number fields. That's the material from Tate's thesis. So we're talking about integration on locally compact abelian groups, stuff like that. Um, and then Washington's cyclotomic fields. These are all great reads. You're gonna need to know class field theory. Now, Castles Froehlich covers a lot of class field theory, but there are dedicated references to the topic. So Milne's class field theory is where I learned. You're just gonna to wanna to have a lot of supplements nearby you. So Castles, Froelich, Sarah's Local Fields, Sarah Gal Galois Homology. There are various online courses and online notes from various universities because Milne's notes aren't complete and he even admits it, okay. Neukirch covers class field theory very formally and rigorously uh, in the same text as I recommended above, algebraic number theory, chapters four through six, okay. Before really seriously getting into algebraic geometry, not only should you know the basics of differential geometry, but you should probably understand the basics of Riemann surfaces as well. For this, I like N.P. Tell's Introduction to Riemann Surfaces and Algebraic Curves. That's an online course. And then I like Miranda's Algebraic Curves and Riemann Surfaces after that. So chapters one through eight, it should be enough. And then I like Forster's Lectures on Riemann Surfaces. If you're looking for proofs for some of the more advanced theorems like existence of meromorphic functions, et cetera, you don't really need to do this third one though unless you really wanna be rigorous from, and, and kind of take a ground up approach. Okay, 
Algebraic geometry, you need quite a lot of algebraic geometry. You need to know your scheme theory pretty well. So I like Hartshorn's Algebraic Geometry, Chapter 1. I like, after that, proceeding into Vakil's The Rising Sea Foundations of Algebraic Geometry Notes. Then I like finishing Hartshorn. And then you need to get into some more advanced stuff, like uh, Knudsen's book on algebraic spaces, Milne's et al. cohomology, etc. You're probably going to want to even know a little bit about stacks. There's like Olson's book. There's David Zurich Brown's course that's running right now. There's, uh, let's see, there's uh, Alper's course on MG. So there's a lot of things you need to know that you probably should know, but they're not really necessary for the proof of Fermat's last theorem. I included what I thought were maybe the most necessary things here. Although Knudsen, you might argue, isn't really that necessary. Um, you're going to get stuck a lot during this stage. So I recommend having as many supplemental materials by you as possible. And my go-tos were Gortz and Wedhorn's Algebraic Geometry 1, Liu Algebraic Geometry and Arithmetic Curves, the Stacks Project hosted by Columbia, Grotendieck's EGA and SGA, and then Eisenbud Harris, the Geometry of Schemes. Okay. So... Um, obviously, the proof of Fermat's last theorem is basically driven by the theory of elliptic curves in some sense, and so you're going to want to need you're going to want to know a lot about elliptic curves. So Silverman's The Arithmetic of Elliptic Curves, coupled with Alvaro Lozano Robledo's course, an introduction to the Arith arithmetic of elliptic curves on YouTube. That's a great place to start once you've read like Silverman, Tate, etc. There's also Silverman's second book, Advanced Topics in the Arithmetic of Elliptic Curves, which you definitely need to read. You're going to want to know more broadly about abelian varieties, not just elliptic curves. So Conrad's notes are a great modern reference for the main theorems of abelian varieties. And you can supplement with, you know, Edixovin and Moonen and Gears abelian varieties, Mumford's abelian varieties, Milne's abelian varieties, and Lang's abelian varieties. Everybody has a book called Abelian Varieties. And then there's also, you're going to want to know about Jacobian varieties as well. So Milne has notes on that. Modular forms. A great place to learn about modular forms is Diamond and Sherman, a first course in modular forms, although that book is quite difficult. Don't be fooled by the title. There are also a couple of key theorems about modular forms here and there, like Bayes' Converse theorem that you're going to want to know about. So Augs, modular forms, and Dirichlet series, chapters one and five especially, we'll cover those. Uh, group schemes and p-divisible groups, those are definitely things you're going to want to know about. So I like starting with Waterhouse Introduction to Affine Group Schemes and or Schuf Introduction to Finite Group Schemes, and then moving into more uh, dedicated references on the topic. So like Tate's Finite Flat Group Schemes is a great reference, and then Tate's P-Divisible Groups and or Morrow's P-Divisible Groups would be where you would want to go to learn about P-Divisible Groups, of course. Um, so now, so that's the end of the graduate preparation. Let's look at some more advanced preparation. Uh, you're probably not going to be content just believing that neuron models of abelian varieties exist. So for that, I like reading Lichtenbaum's Curves Over Discrete Valuation Rings, followed by the BLR Neuron Models book. And then I'm going to be kind of a smart aleck here. Probably you should just read all of SGA at some point, like EGA and SGA even. I, I mean, I hate to say that, but there are facts and theorems from EGA and SGA referenced so often in all of the canonical sources covering Fermat's last theorem and all of its auxiliary theorems, that it gets so annoying after a while to not have read these. They, they might as well just start doing it. I mean, I haven't even done it yet myself, but it's on my short list of things to start doing. I mean, it's thousands and thousands of pages, but you know, whatever. You need to also learn mathematical French anyway, so. Okay, linear algebraic groups, you're gonna wanna know, you know some stuff about those. Springer's algebraic groups, supplemented with Borel's linear algebraic groups and Milne's algebraic groups. Between the three of those things, you should get what you need to know. Automorphic forms and L functions. There's Borel, Castleman, automorphic forms, representations and L functions, parts one and two, especially up through Tate's article called Number Theoretic Background. Um, these, this is an extremely hard uh, two volume set of books. Uh, read as much of it as you can stomach by this point. Maybe you'll just wanna periodically come back to it. It also depends on how deep you want to go into Fermat's last theorem. Langlands program, the more you know about the Langlands program, the better. Um, Bushnell, Henniard's a great place to start. The local Langlands conjecture for GL2. And then you can kind of use its references to proceed from there if you want to learn more. Uh, let's see. Modular forms. I like diamond M modular forms and modular curves. I like Langlands, modular forms and L-adic representations. Deline Rappaport is 
incredibly useful at various points in the proof of Fermat's last theorem. It's in French and it's very difficult, but you know, it gives you a way of thinking about uh, models for modular curves over spec Z in a way that just no other write-up really does, at least not that I'm aware of. Um, Jacques A. Langlands is technically used at various points depending on the depth you want to go into Fermat's last theorem. And so Jacques A. Langlands on mor morphic forms for GL2. Jack A. Langlands is used um, depending on the depth you want to go into Fermat's last theorem at various points. And so Jack A. Langlands automorphic forms on GL2 is the place to go for that. For elliptic curves, you're probably going to want to take a look at Katz Mazur arithmetic moduli of elliptic curves. This pairs really well with Deline Rappaport. Um, there are various duality theorems you need throughout the proof of Fermat's last theorem, especially when you're looking at Galois cohomology stuff. So Milne has notes on arithmetic duality theorems, especially the first couple of chapters that you might want to take a look at. I think at one or two points, you need to know some geometric class field theory, but just kind of the basic statements. Conrad has notes on global geometric class field theory that you can take a look at. Let's look at some of the big theorems you might want to study before you go into FLT. So there's the open image theorem of Serre. That is a book followed by a paper. So the book is Abelian Aladic Representations and Elliptic Curves, and the paper is, in English anyway, Galois Properties of Points of Finite Order on Elliptic Curves. There's Mazur's Torsion Theorem, which is used once in the proof, I think. Uh, Snowden has an entire online course run through University of Michigan called Mazur's Torsion Theorem that you can take a look at. Balting's Finite System, so Balting's proof of the Mordell conjecture. I would start with Darman's Rational Points on Curves, and then I would read the dedicated book to this theorem, which is Cornell Silverman Arithmetic Geometry. And you can supplement this with Snowden's Faulting's Proof of the Mordell Conjecture Notes. There are some more big theorems you want to be aware of. Uh, I mean, there's some really hard theorems. Cariel's theorem on vanishing cycles we will use over and over and over again. Um, there's Cariel's paper. There's also some notes online somewhere that I haven't been I mean, I have them myself, but I haven't been able to find them recently on this theorem. Uh, Raynaud has a bunch of theorems that you need, but his tight PPP paper is, you know, probably the most important paper of his that you'll want to read. Fontaine's categorical equivalence. I gave you the references here for that. Deline and Sayre's weight one construction. I gave you the references here for that. Um, Laga, I gave you the original paper, but then Laga has notes called modular forms of weight one that cover this. Then there's Deline's construction. So this is Deline trying to attach a Galois representation to a cusp, you know, a cusp form of weight K. We really only, I mean, here's, here are the general references, but we really only need Deline's construction for weight two. And the Diamond, Darman, Taylor notes give a very quick proof of actually a more general result on the Jacobian. And then Shimura's introduction to the arithmetic theory of automorphic forms also proves it with much more detail and a lot more surrounding context. Okay. You need Ramakrishna's work on the flat deformation functor, so that would be his thesis um, on a variation of Mazur's deformation functor. Langland's tunnel is a huge thing that you'll probably just want to black box. Uh, the original proof is contained in Tunnel's Arden's conjecture for representations of octahedral type and Langland's base change for GL2. This is a whole can of worms kind of by itself, though, as are most of the above items, to be perfectly honest. Like in particular here, the trace formula is invoked. The trace formula is an extremely hard theorem that you could probably spend, you know, a couple of years just learning about by itself. A great start if you want to learn the trace formula would be a very modern book, uh, Getz and Hans, An Introduction to Automorphic Representations. And then I just want to say, like, that's not it. There will be plenty of additional papers and portions of books that ought to be read. They tend to be narrow in scope, though, even if they yield highly non-trivial and extremely important results. And we will reference these in this playlist as the results come up, okay? Now, once you are done with you know, your preparation, where do you wanna to go to actually learn the proof? Last video, I gave you many references that contain a lot of information you might want to know about number theoretic background, history of the proof of Fermat's last theorem and proofs for specific exponents. Once you wanna to go to learn the general proof, I think these are your main references besides just Wiles and Wiles Taylor's papers themselves. So the big one is Cornell, Silverman, Stevens, Modular Forms and Fermat's Last Theorem. Then there's the Diamond, Darman, Taylor notes called Fermat's Last Theorem. There's Saito's two books, Fermat's Last Theorem, Basic Tools and Fermat's Last Theorem, The Proof. 
There's the Coates, Yao book, Elliptic Curves, Modular Forms, and Fermat's Last Theorem. And then Stanford has a modularity lifting seminar website with lots of good notes as well. Between those, and then if you really need them, uh, Wiles and Wiles Taylor's actual papers, I think that should give you more than enough. In fact, I think this book by itself is probably more than enough for most people. Okay, so next video, we'll look at some of the key players in the proof of Fermat's Last Theorem. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.